Good afternoon, everybody. Um, our apologies for starting a little bit behind schedule, but we had some technical difficulties. Um, my name is Tom Nijenaars. Uh, I will be your moderator today. I'm a nephrologist at the uh, Radboud University Medical Center uh, in Nijmegen, um, interested in rare kidney disorders, uh, including rare tubular disorders. And therefore, it's my pleasure today to introduce uh, uh, Rosa Vargas, who will be our presenter for today. Um, uh, Rosa is an expert on uh, rare kidney disorders and genetics uh, with a specialization in pediatric nephrology um, uh, and, as I said, an expert in, uh, in genetics and in, in hereditary renal tubular diseases. And she's in charge of the rare hereditary tubulopathies unit uh, at the genetics department of the uh, hospital uh, Georges Pompidou in Paris and also uh, the manager and coordinator of the French National Tubulopathies Network. Um, so Rosa, um, with our technical difficulties, uh, please go ahead. Thank you very much, to, uh, Tom, for this uh, kind introduction. Um, yeah, can you see my uh, the, the slide, I think? Mm -hmm. uh, so today's topic is uh, then, then disease. Uh, which is a proximal tubulopathy. As you know, uh, the cells of the proximal tubule have a high metabolic activity and play an essential role in the reabsorption and processing of a large amount of filtrated ions and solutes, including sodium, calcium, bicarbonate, organic solutes, and small proteins. Next, please. Then disease is characterized by a low molecular weight proteinuria along with a variable presence of other proximal tubular abnormalities or sometimes Fanconi syndrome. This variability explain, explains the different names of the uh, initial description of this disease in different countries. For example, name then disease in England, it's linked recessive ne nephrolithiasis in USA. It's linked recessive hypophosphatemic rickets in Italy or idiopathic low molecular weight proteinuria in Japan. Next, please. Then disease is a recessive X linked disease which affects ma males in several generations. It is uh, genetically heterogeneous. The, there is an animation, so please uh, next. Uh, CLCN5, the first gene responsible uh, for uh, then disease was identified in 1996. In 2005, it was demonstrated that the molecular uh, abnormalities in the OCRL gene, next, known as the gene responsible for low, love syndrome, was also responsible for then disease. These two genes, next, explain the disease in 50 to 60 percent and 15 percent of cases, respectively. Additional heterogeneity should explain the disease in the remaining 25 to uh, 35 ca of cases. Several candidate genes have been tested, but the genetic cause in this, in this group remains unidentified. Next. Here you have the structure of the uh, CLCN5 gene. Uh, which encodes for the for CLC5, a protein of 746 amino acids. The small uh, color symbol, symbols are the point mutation and the blue line, a uh, large deletion describe it. The mutations are scattered through the coding region with no evidence for mutation hotspots. In the pie chart, you can see the percentage of mutations by type. More than 60% could be considered as severe, including nonsense, frame shift, splicing, and large deletions. 
silsify protein is next is characterized by 18 alpha next alpha helices represented by letters in the uh, panel B and uh, uh, express it and they are expressed in the, in the membrane of intracellular vesicles as homodimer. Each the identical subunit contains a pore responsible for the chloride and proton counter transport. CLCN5 mutations results in loss of antiporter function due to either uh, the absence of the protein or to an um, impirate processing unfolding with endoplasmic reticulum retention. In some uh, proteins, mutated proteins, there is a loss of chloride conductance or the loss of estochiometry of one, two protons, one chloride. Some mutations in red here in the, in the panel uh, cluster at the dimer interface, impairing dim dimerization and leading to rapid degradation of the mutant protein within the cell. A quite low number of mutations are recurrent, which indicates that most of families have private mutations. Next. Here you have the genomic organization of the OCRL gene, which is composed of 23 exons encoding for the different parts of the enzyme that you can see below. Specific mutations that cause love syndrome are shown above the gene, whereas mutations that cause then disease are shown below. The majority of mutations that cause DEN disease 2 are located in exons 1 to 5. But some mutations here are completely quoted in, in, and located in the phosphatase domain have been identified as causing both Love syndrome and DEN disease 2. In the in a, in, a, in part of uh, the, you can see the protein, the structure of the protein with the different uh, domains uh, of this uh, enzyme with a phosphatase activity. Next. In the proximal cells, approximately two thirds of the filtered water, sodium chloride, calcium, as well as the totally of glucose, phosphate, and amino acids are reabsorbed by specialized transport on the apical and basolateral area of the principal cells, driven by the electrochemical gradient generated by the basolateral sodium potassium ATPase. In addition, proximal tubule cells also reabsorb a significant amount of albumin and low molecular weight plasma proteins. The enzytic pathway that allows the reabsorption of these molecular, low molecular weight proteins involves um, coat pits and coat vesicles that you can see in uh, red, pale red and blue. Um, this uh, coat vesicles in the pathway are followed by early endosomes that form recycling endosomes and finally mature or late to late endosomes and lysosomes. In these vesicles, the pH drops from six in early endosomes, five, five to five or below in lysosomes. 
This vesicular acidification is necessary for the dissociation of the ligand receptor complex, recycling of receptors to the apical membrane and progression of ligands into lysosomes. In parallel, the chloride concentrations drop from 20 to 40 millimolar in early endosomes to 80 millimolar or more in lysosomes. CLCS5 facilitates endosomal acidification and is functional couplet to proton ATPase, as you can see in the uh, um, scheme uh, of two uh, vesicles in blue. CLC5 operates as a chloride proton exchanger and has an on and off burst of activity. In the nascent endosome, active protons enter via the proton ATPase and acidifies the endosome, whereas CLC5 remains inactive. As CLC5 is voltage-gated transport, the accumulation of positive charge activates this exchanger provide a route for proton exit and chloride accumulation, which are characteristics of mature endosome. The inositol of polyphosphate 5-phosphatase or OCRL can localize to the plasma membrane in, in, in clattering coated pits in ves clattering coated vesicles in early endosome in transgonji network as well as in the primary cilium and in the lysosomes. This enzyme controls li lipid identity in the endosomal pathway and has the highest efficacy in removing the phosphate in position 5 of the inositol rings to maintain low levels of phosphoinositol 4,5-biphosphate, which is necessary for proper endocytic trafficking. Next. Uh, studies uh, in vivo and in vitro in uh, CLCN5 knockout mice and cells have shown that loss of function of CLC5 next is associated with abnormal endosomal acidification or defective endosomal chloride accumulation or increase os of phosphatidine inositol biphosphate in early endosome, endosomes, resulting in a severe trafficking defect, which is responsible first, next, of reduced levels of megalin and cubilin at the brush border and defective receptor mediated endocytosis. The final consequence is an urinary loss of several low molecular weight ligands in which you will find some examples here, including the most uh, uh, used proteins, uh, small proteins to evaluate low molecular weight proteinuria. Second, there is an alteration of lysosomal function, which may at least in part be to do uh, to defective megalin and finally uh, next uh, a defective internaliz internalization of uh, sodium phosphate 2A cotransporter or NAPI 2A and also of a sodium proton exchanger 3 also known as NHE3. These two, uh, these last uh, characteristics uh, have been observed in animal models. 
Also, there is a, a discrepancy in the scribed mouse model regarding the presence of hypercalciuria and their possible, possible mechanisms. The following mechanisms have been suggested. First, as a result of abnormal endocytosis, there is an increase of tubular PTH concentration which via its receptor will induce upregulation of one alpha hydroxylase, increasing calcitriol and uh, uh, in, this, in consequence intestinal calcium reabsorption. However, also as consequence of a normal endocytosis, a great quantity of the Vita 25 vitamin D appears in the final urine, decreasing the substrate. Second, uh, PTH might indirectly favor a renal calcium lake by inhibiting sodium proton exchanger 3. As men mentioned previously, NH E3 expression was redu reduced in mo mouse model of ten one disease and, and a PTH induced endocytosis of N NH E3 was also markedly reduced. This decrease could be associated with a decrease of proximal tubular sodium reabsorption and consequently a decrease of paracellular calcium reabsorption in the proximal cells. Finally, PTH also stimulates calcium transcellular reabsorption in distal convoluted tubule, which can counterbalance these effects. Probably the balance between these features that increase or decrease calcium absorption will determine the presence or absence of hypercalciuria. In addition, nutritional or genetic factors could participate in the regulation of calciuria. In a similar way, the increase of tubular PTH concentrations enhances internalization of the sodium potassium, sorry, sodium phosphate co-transporter NAP2A explaining the hyperphosphaturia observed in animal models and in some patients. Next, studies in animal and proximal cell models as well as urinary proteome analysis in patients have shown an increase of expression of uh, uh, transcripts or proteins participating to proliferation, proliferation, oxidative stress, and interstitial matrix remodeling, allowing making a hypothesis to explain how the normal endocytosis could affect the whole proximal cell. They are summarized, summarized in this cartoon. The endolysosomal defect might compromise autophagy which, with defective clearance of autophagosomes, which may lead to oxidative stress. It has been shown that oxidative stress disrupts the integrity of the junctional complex, in particular the sonula occludens protein, which might activate an abnormal signaling cascade involving other proteins and transcription factors known to promote cell proliferation and repress proximal tubule difference. Next, in a recent model of DEN2 disease and Love syndrome, the role of OCRL in cellular trafficking of multiligand receptors was confirmed. The phenotype was due to accumulation of uh, phospho, phosphatidylinositol biphosphate in andolysosome, andolysosomes, driving local hyperpolymerization of A and actin, as you can see in the uh, left uh, panel, 
and impairing traffic of the endocytic LRP2 receptor, quantified here as a number of structure associating F actin and LRP2. The OCRL deficiency was also associated with the disruption of the lysosomal dynamic and proteolytic activity. As you can see in the right panel, uh, there is an increase in number and size of lysosomes immunostained with the lysosomal associated protein LAMP1. Um, In the, in the cow model. In addition, there is a decrease in degradation of uh, albu bovine, bovine serum albumin evaluated here as a decrease of fluorescent punta colocalization with LMP1. You can see in the, in the knockout image a big uh, um, punta uh, um, in green. Next, uh, if we come back to clinical presentation, this tab table summarizes the main clinical characteristics and diagnosis observed in the French cohort of patients with DEN disease. As you can see, DEN disease, uh, next, um, is frequently diagnosed, diagnosed in children low molecular weight proteinuria is, pres is present in 100% of cases ne next, followed by hypercalciuria in 22 and 100 respectively. The, the percentages of other proximal abnormalities are quite variable and complete uh, renal Fanconi syndrome was present only in 11% per of patients. Finally, rickets was observed in 90 and 14 percent of and failure was failure to three was more frequent in patients with with DEN2 disease. Next, the phenotype of our patient is similar to other cohorts described in the literature and so, as shown in the dat data for DEN1 that we summarized in 2015 and the published. Uh, data of uh, European court of DEN2. In consequence, the diagnosis of DEN disease should be suspected in presence of at least two major criteria, low molecular weight proteinuria, hypercalciuria, renal failure, family history of X, uh, linked inheritance, and one minor criterion including one or more defectors of proximal reabsorption. Next, here I have summarized characteristics of two Japanese cohorts and one Chinese to show that first, in Asian population, next, uh, the dense disease is detected earlier between two to five years compared to six to 11 years in North America and, and Europe probably due to the annual school urinary screening, particularly um, in Japanese population. And second, that the percentage of patients with hypercalciuria is lower in Asia patients. Next. And finally, in a recent work, an Italian group compared the characteristics of all published cases of DENT1 and DENT2 that point out some significant difference between these two groups in red and additional clinical characteristics showed in green. Patients with the DEN disease can have nephrotic branch proteinuria without hypoalbuminemia in most of the case. The glycosuria, hypophosphatemia, and hypokalemia are more frequent in DENT1 and renal failure in DENT2. Next. Uh, failure to thrive is more frequent in patients with DEN2 and neurological manifestations as intellectual disability and hypotonia have been described in some patients with DEN2. 
Finally, in some Japanese and Korean cohorts, elevated concentration of muscular muscle enzymes uh, have been reported in then two patients, and two papers have described night blindness in then one patients. Next. The main complication of DEN disease is the progression to end-style renal failure, which occurs be between the third and the fifth decades of life in 30 to 80 percent of affected males. In this first graph, you can see the decrease of the estimated GFR with age. The second graph shows that the rate of each GFR decline with age was not significantly different in the presence or absence of nephrocalcinosis. Finally, this table shows you the prediction to reach next, to reach next, please, to re the prediction to reach each CKD stage from two linear regressions we performed, which are, which are quite similar for stage four and five. And, uh, uh, in this, uh, with this prediction, these states uh, are reached uh, to uh, 47 and 54 years. Next, concerning the proteinuria, we have observed that it increased with age, concomitant to the decrease in renal function. As you can see in the left graph, more than half of the patient age 18 or older 62% had a proteinuria, proteinuria value uh, um, up 2 grams by day, which remained elevated even at late stage of chronic kidney disease. The central graph illustrates that albuminuria represents a minor part of proteinuria. And finally, the right graph shows the presence of low molecular weight proteinuria with high excretion of alpha-1 and beta-2 microglobulins or retinol binding protein as a function of albuminuria. Next. In the recent review from Janacelo et al, published data of renal biopsy were gathered showing either normal histology or a large variety of glomerular, tubular, and interstitial lesions. The more frequent are glomerulosclerosis, tubular atrophy, interstitial fibrosis, and foot process effacement. To note, there are patients with the same mutation and a different histology. In some cases, estimated GFR has been shown to correlate with the degree of interstitial fibrosis in a histopathologic analysis. Next. If we look uh, now the, to the evolution of other manifestation of the disease, First, hypercalcuria evaluated as calcium creatinine ratio Z score was mainly observed in children and as expected, it declined concomitantly with EGFR. Second, we observed low phosphatemia and normal to high range plasma calcitriol concentrations even at later stage of CKD which is consistent with an intrarenal stimulation of calcitriol synthesis and absorptive hypercalcuria. Next. Finally, we found that plasma potassium concentration declined with age, and half of the patients older than 18, year, 18 years had hypokalemia with normal bicarbonate bicarbonate even with impaired renal function. This observation is important because these features can lead to an erroneous diagnosis of Barter syndrome. Next. No correlation was observed between genotype using the type of mutation as criteria of severity and four cardinal phenotype parameters, parameters at diagnosis. Ne next. 
similar that had be, has been described in the literature. Yeah? For example, no correlation between the type of mutation and proteinuria was observed in one of the Japanese cohorts. It is important also to note that uh, there is a considera considerable intrafamilial variability in disease severity uh, inside the, 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 the same family with the same mutation or uh, patients with the same mutation of different families. Next, heterozygous females are often asymptomatic and exhibit moderate low molecular weight proteinuria and hypercalciuria. This nomogram proposed by Norden comparing low molecular weight proteinuria excretion with albuminuria is very useful to, uh, for their evaluation. Heterozygous carriers show intermediate values between controls and then disease or Fanconi patients. At the right, you can see the representation of ratios of next of ratios of urinary beta 2 microglobulin and calciuria available from literature and our patient illustra illustrating the intermediate phenotype in heterozygous females. The same uh, nomograms uh, uh, exist for uh, alpha-1 microglobulin and uh, retinol binding protein. Next. With the example of this large family, I would like to illustrate the clinical utility of genetic di diagnosis. Next, a fortuitous discovery of nephrocalcinosis in elevated creatinine and low molecular proteinuria in this young boy next at 16 uh, allowed the suspicion of then disease after the genetic confirmation of the proban the diagnosis was also confirmed in his uncles next and his 10 years old brother next in addition the carrier status was confirmed in his mother his grandmother uh, three out of six ounce and one cousin. Finally, next, uh, an early diagnosis was made in this boy before any biological manifestation and the disease was excluded in these two other boys. Uh, not all cases or, or families are like this one. There, there is families with no uh, family history and the novel mutation in our experience um, in, is 12% uh, per in 12 person of cases. Next, differential diagnosis includes other hereditary causes of renal Fanconi, this, Fanconi syndrome, uh, distal renal uh, tubular acidosis, which is a cause of nephrocalcinosis and can have transient proximal tubular abnormalities that are corrected with the correction of acidosis and or hypokalemia. Obviously, other causes of nephrocalcinosis and or hypokalemia as like as such uh, as the Barter syndrome, uh, infantile hypercalcemia, etc as well as uh, other causes of mixed proteinuria and focal sclerosis and glomerular sclerosis. Finally, it is important to always consider it in, in the differential diagnosis acquired renal Fanconi syndrome secondary to toxics or, toxics or drugs. Next. Um, there is no a specific treatment for then disease and the evidence for efficacy of drugs used is poor. The treatments include supplementation in sodium, potassium, phosphate, water, etc., according to the clinical presentation. The most frequent drugs used are hydrochlorothiazide to decrease calciuria with the risk of hypovolemia and hypokalemia 
particularly in children, and no proven effect on nephrocalcinosis. Indometacin in patients with renal Fanconi syndrome has been used, and potassium citrate in stone formers, um, and finally in some patients, a ACE inhibitors or ARB have been used to treat proteinuria. It's important to note the, that uh, calcitriol could not be indicated in patients with CKD due to the, the risk of increase the hypercalciuria. Next, the larger experience with the use of uh, ACE inhibitors on and or ARB was recently reported by a Chinese group. They uh, report, reported these treatments in 13 children. Some of them have uh, uh, a renal biopsy. And, and uh, the median age at onset of treatment was five years, and after a median uh, treatment of 1.7 years, they observed a reduction in urinary albuminuria creatinine ratio in seven patients, so about 50% of cases. And in the other patients, they observed an increase of this ratio. Next, there are uh, a lot of things uh, uh, to understand concerning the relations between uh, proximal cell dysfunction and process progression to CKD, the role of the tubular proteinuria, the phenotypic variability, uh, and uh, obviously, uh, in the perspective, there are it is, it is necessary large cohorts and studies um, to evaluate the treatment efficacy and the development of new therapies. Um, there are some recent uh, works that uh, uh, studied. Uh, some of these uh, perspective, uh, perspectives I described that uh, I described. And uh, next, uh, um, for example, this study uh, uh, investigate the effect of bone marrow, marrow transplantation in uh, uh, knockout mice. Uh, with then disease one, and the authors observed a rescue of the apical expression of LCLC5 and megalin receptors, and also improvement of, of proximal tubular dysfunction, uh, and uh, pointing out the potential rescue of proximal cells, uh, uh, the patients with then disease one. Next, more recently, and after the results of studies in humanized cow of uh, uh, knockout of OCRL model, uh, and a study evaluate the response to alpelisive, which is a phosphoinositid 3 kinase inhibitor. In the uh, interconversion of phosphoinositides is necessary that, that are necessary for the endocytic and endosomal pa pathway. There are there are another important actors. Is the case of the, the of the PI3 K, K uh, which is a kinase that phosphorylates um, phosphoinositide biphosphate. The loss of OC, OCRL, as shown in the middle panel, leads to ectopic accumulation of this uh, biphosphate uh, in the endosomal compartments, uh, which is, as we saw, uh, saw earlier, 
responsibility for aberrant F actin polymerization, blocking uh, the uh, recycling of endos endosomes and preventing la the ligand reabsorption. So these authors in this paper treated uh, cow mice or CRL cow mice with alpelicib, which is an uh, inhibitor of uh, PIE3K, uh, during six weeks, and uh, uh, they observe a decrease of proteinuria and rescue of the cellular levels, levels of megalin. At the cellular level, in uh, OCRL deficient human kidney cells, this treatment decreased levels of B phosphate, which result in decreased actin polymerization and improve, improvement of the endocytic machinery. With also, uh, they also observed a balance uh, with uh, this uh, B phosphate and other phosphate in the endosomes. Next, I will finish this webinar with the interesting results that have just published this week from the Spanish group. This important work gives some perspectives in phenotypic variability. These authors generated a cellular model of human proximal cells expressing in a stable way CLC5 wild type or three different pathogenic variants located in the same helix and forming part of dimer interface of CLC5. Cells harboring the variants exhibit impaired albumin endocytosis, increased substrate adhesion, and decreased collective migration, characteristics uh, all of a less differentiated epithelial phenotype. Nevertheless, they have different um, gene expression profile, as you can see uh, in, the, uh, in these two panels uh, at the left in the heat map. And when they look at the common genes in transcriptomes of different variants, only five genes were shared, suggesting that there are other associated pathways depending on the variant that could explain the phenotypic variability of the one patients. The gene set enrichment analysis showed that the genes implicated in uh, common pathways are uh, affected biological process implicated in kidney development, anion homeostasis, organic acid transport, extracellular matrix organization, and cell migration. So uh, this is the end of my presentation. I would be happy to uh, answer your question next, uh, but before the ans answer your question, I would like to remember our next webinar webinars. Uh, the the next is in uh, 29 June uh, on uh, uh, update and on Cadigo and in, on immune glomerulopathies after the 7 uh, September uh, in renal hypophosphatemia and finally the 21st September cystinosis adult adult view. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Rosa, for this very nice um, uh, overview on dense disease. Um, uh, because we had some technical problems, I forgot to ask everybody to ask the questions in the question section, but you still found the question section, so that is nice. Um, um, uh, uh, one of the questions that, uh, that came in um, uh, um, with the slide on uh, on the uh, histological uh, data um, was actually a question from Enrico uh, Morales who asked what is actually the cause of the food process effacement that you see in the in the uh, um, kidney biopsies? Do we know that? 
I don't. I don't know. Uh, uh, we we know that uh, uh, CLC five is expressed in the in the glomeruli, but uh, uh, we I don't know really what is the role in the in the podocytes. But it's a it's not present in all uh, patients with um, with. Uh, than disease that have the biopsy, but uh, the, the only thing that I can say is the uh, CLC5 is expressed in the glomeruli. Probably there is a role, but I don't know what, which is. Because that, that makes it interesting because uh, if you would think of the proteinuria as just um, proximal tubular loss or proximal tubular functional loss, um, uh, then you would not expect ACE inhibition to, to do anything. Um, but if you would think that there was also a kind of primary glomerular defect, then you would expect that treatment with ACE inhibitors would be worthwhile. And I guess that that's also yes. a little bit, let's say, the hypothesis behind the data that you showed, right? But uh, we observed that the proteinuria increases with age, so probably it's also a secondary phenomenon and not necessarily the initial uh, uh, phenomenon. And, and uh, going a little bit along those lines, uh, um, you showed that with increasing EGFR, your calciuria actually goes down or tends to go down. Um, what is now the idea about, let's say, the role of the hypercalcuria or the nephrocalcinosis in the uh, um, chronic renal insufficiency that you see in the dense patient? Is that a, a primary um, uh, thing? or? Uh, so in, in our cohort, uh, we didn't, uh, we don't observe a correlation between the decrease in EGFR and the presence or absence of nephrocalcinosis. There is no correlation. Yeah. So, so should a hypercalcuria be a treatment um, target then, uh, or? Um, I, I think it, in, in patients with the ne nephrolytosis, it's important because the nephrolytosis is a, uh, it's a painful phenomenon, so it's, a, it's important. And uh, without the doubt, if it's uh, uh, participating in some way to fibrosis or uh, you, you, I say, uh, Probably it's important also to control, but um, it definitely it is necessary to, to perform uh, studies, uh, control randomized and, uh, and um, follow up of patients with, without an, with control or not hypercalcuria to to answer this question. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe um, uh, along those lines, uh, uh, so, so it appears that the hypercalcuria is mostly due to uh, gastrointestinal hyperabsorption uh, more than a primary uh, renal leak. Um, should you then tell the patients to stop eating calcium? Uh, in, in children, it's a, it's a hard question. I think it's not indicated in children. And, uh, um, as I as I show, uh, the probably the two phenomena exist: renal hypercalcuria and uh, hyper hyperabsorption, digestive hyperabsorption of calcium. So it is we don't know in each patient with which phenomena is uh, important or not. So it's very difficult to do to to say for all the people. Um, so it's, I think it's important uh, to measure calcitriol and uh, try to analyze in each patient uh, which part is absor uh, hyperabsor intestinal hyperabsorption or renal uh, lake of calcium. So there are also a couple of questions about phosphate. Um, uh, one of them uh, uh, is one of the first questions asked, and I already apologize for the pronunciation of, of your name, but it's from Agnieszka Pukalio. 
Um, uh, and the question is, uh, well, we treat dense disease, uh, we should modify the doses of, uh, of phosphorus. Um, and she says, when I monitor the concentration of phosphorus in blood one hour before the next dose, it is in a normal range. But when I take this blood one, one and a half hours after the dose uh, was given, uh, the level of phosphorus is decreased, and I observe a decreased level of calcium and elevated activity of PTH. So the question is, what level of phosphorus should I achieve during the treatment? Uh, and when should I take the blood samples for monitoring? That's a quite detailed question. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I think that the uh, phosphate is a, a very difficult uh, I think it's a, a large variability in um, in values, uh, and there are uh, influences of the type of dosage, and, the, and it's in, in the same individual, it's very variable. It's it's a, it's a quite difficult um, um, iron to analyze. Um, but uh, I think in children, there are some things that are important to take into account as uh, uh, growth and uh, bone um, remodulation. And, and uh, in all the patients, it's important also to control calcitriol because, as you know, the hypophosphatemia induces uh, uh, increase the the synthesis of calcitriol. So I, I'm not sure that the uh, level of phosphate it's a, it's the only thing to 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 look to control the, the, the treatment. It's a global thing, including the calcitriol, including the the growth and the bone status of patients. Um, and I see an, another question from uh, Elena Levchenko asking, is there a place for citrate therapy in patients uh, based on the beneficial effects shown in mouse studies? Yes, uh, again, there is a no uh, controlled study proving uh, that, but I think that uh, 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 we need uh, so a lot of clinicians use uh, the, the citrate and uh, we can evaluate individually in patients if it's uh, uh, useful or not, but we need to definitely a, a study comp uh, comparing, um, evaluating the long-term results of the use of uh, potassium citrate. I, don't, I can't answer that, that, this answer. No. I think they don't really have a, a clear hypocitraturia, right? No, no, no. It's not one element of... Um, and there's another uh, question which is... Uh, oh, sorry. No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, which is, I think, also um, uh, a very uh, a practical question from Graham Smith, who says, I have two uh, uh, brothers aged 14 and 11. I guess uh, uh, he has two patients, which are brothers aged 14 and 11, uh, <laughs> who have low molecular weight uh, uh, proteinuria, nephrocalcinosis, and uh, mild uh, uh, to normal urine calcium over, uh, over creatinine. And the genetics for the two uh, dent mutations were, were negative. Uh, no evidence of other tubular dysfunction um uh, venous bicarbonate 26 millimoles per liter do i now say that this is dense disease so that's actually a question what about the mutation negative uh, patients i i uh, i think that there is a really uh, a group of patients with dense disease cl cl clearly uh with uh, no no genetic identification so there is two possibilities this patient can have a mutation in a region not a study of the one of these genes, so a, a deeper, um, a deeper intronic mutation or pro mutation in the promoter or something like that, or there are, there are mutations in the unknown gene because there is a really a cohort of uh, about 30 percent of patients without with clinical clear clinical dent disease without mutations. 
Um, and I have another, I guess this is kind of a follow-up question to uh, the discussion on ACE inhibitors and, and polycyte food process uh, uh, phase C. Um, but uh, Anil Vasudenevan asked whether uh, SGLT2 inhibitors could also be a potential therapy to control the proteinuria, uh, considering that a subset of patients have polycyte injury. Um, I ask uh, for the others, it's... Uh... It's a possibility, but for the as for the other kinds of treatment, we need to prove that this option is really the the study of Japanese show shows a, a decrease in fifty percent of cases, but also the increase in the other fifty percent of cases. So it's part of probably of the variability of uh, clinical presentation of then disease and probably there is a pathway different pathways and different patients and the the thing is to choose for what type of patients uh, this tra treatment could be uh, useful or, or not uh, but in absence of uh, a controlled study, it's, it's also a very difficult question. It's an, it's an open question. Well, the, the, this question it also relates to therapy, uh, and I guess we should make that the last question because we are uh, um, uh, already at five o'clock. Um, th this, this, is, this one is a little bit more practical. Uh, is there a role of spironolactone as a treatment for both the uh, hypokalemia and the uh, proteinuria? Uh, sorry, can you, could you repeat the question at the beginning? A, a role for spironolactone in the treatment of hypokalemia uh, and maybe proteinuria? Um, to my to my knowledge, uh, it's never have have never used. Uh, I I think that as in other uh, soul loss in tubulopathics, the first thing to do is to uh, to give uh, salt to the patients and try to to compensate the 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 soul loss into loss in um, and the spironolactone as other diuretics, it's a therapy uh, when the hypokalemia is very severe and uh, this, there is no response to uh, other uh, type of treatments. Um, in, uh, uh, to my knowledge, it, it has never used in patients with then disease. But uh, I said I prefer to give salt uh, <laughs> to the patient before to 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 try an other thing. Sure, sure. Okay, uh, thank you all very much, uh, especially uh, Rosa, of course, uh, again for the uh, uh, for the great talk and the great uh, answers to the questions. Um, and before um, um, we leave, I would like to again um, uh, focus your attention on our next uh, ERGNET uh, uh, webinar, which is on uh, Tuesday, the 29th of June, by uh, Jürgen Flöge uh, um, on an update on the KDGO uh, guidelines on immune glomerulopathies. Um, thank you all very, very much, and uh, um, I'll see uh, you at the next webinar. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Thank you. We are now... Um... I don't know. <laughs>